All right, hello, hello, friends, and welcome back to the Gaming Dad Fujo podcast. This is episode number 23, being recorded on May 15th, 2024. I am Fujosevic, your host, former professional Hearthstone player, currently working as an analytical chemist in the pharmaceutical industry. This is a place where we get to talk about all the things that we talked about on our regular streams, on our daily YouTube videos, except instead of interrupting all of the interesting chats that we used to have with gameplay, now I'm going to interrupt myself with other topics. And on today's episode, we will be talking about, at the very least, Helldivers 2, Poke Rogue, Switch 2 Confirmed, Nintendo Emulator Yuzu Lawsuits, wait a second, wait, wait, don't play that music, uh, Xbox shutting down more studios, what about the Circle Season 6? No. Nailed it. All right, all right, and we're going to be getting started with, of course, a friendly reminder. If you're watching on the YouTubes, hit that like and that subscribe button. Leave me a message. Let me know how you're doing. It helps more than you think. If you're listening on the podcasts, give us that five out of five star ratings. Really helps. Also drop a message over there, how you're doing, what you're gaming. Always looking for more gaming dad type hours games that allow us to kind of play on and off. And a little update from us. What have we been doing lately? Brawl Stars kind of taking a little pause. We, 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 we've been talking about it for a while. It's a fun little mobile MOBA. It's a fun top-down little silly shooter. It's fun. But recently, just released, it, it, very recently actually, Poke Rogue, taking, taking the world by storm. This is this has taken up most of my gaming time, probably too much of my time overall, to be perfectly honest. But that's okay. Um, uh, it's, it's Pokemon... Uh, it's a fan, let me be clear, this is a fan-made Pokemon roguelike, where what you do is you start out with a team, We're, we'll, we'll talk some details quickly because I'm, I'm so into this right now. It's basically Pokemon, you pick your team, you, at the, when you first load up the game, it's also, let me, did I mention it's free to play, it's browser based, so you can play it on your laptop, your computer, on your mobile device, which again is a, is a huge, huge, uh, uh, draw factor when we're looking for gaming dad type of games. Uh, so what you do, you pick your team, right? And at the, when you first start the game, you have access to all of the starters from every single region. So the game has every Pokemon from every region ever. And you have to go through what's called, what they refer to as classic mode. And that's 200 rounds, which is 200 fights. And if you, all of your Pokemon die or faint, uh, then you start have to start over. But you carry over these cool, these roguelikes are so cool because they have to carry over little things and you can catch Pokemon in, in random battles. Some of the battles will be trainer battles. Uh, they give gold at the end of each fight. There's these rewards you can pick. Some persist, you know, sometimes it's like a potion. Sometimes it's just, hey, here's a experience bonus. So you gain 25% more experience. Um, there's rival battles, which is the farthest I made it was to round 145. There apparently there, I haven't looked up all the, you know, what to be prepared for when you fight gyms, when you, there's also gym battles, uh, when you fight rivals, they're very, very challenging rival battle at 145, uh, floor, uh, around 145. Uh, it's super interesting. If you catch Pokemon in the wild, they then get added to your starter pool. So the next round you go, you can then start with that Pokemon. So even if you get a really super rare legendary and you're able to catch it in the wild, you can use it next time. Uh, there's also huge benefits to having shinies because they increase. Like I said, you get these rewards at the end of each round. Shinies increase your luck rating. So the more shinies you have, the better your runs will then be. So it's kind of cool. And then, of course, you can get eggs. Big big Pokemon thing. You get eggs by getting these tickets from beating gym, gym trainers by beating the gyms. And then also your rival. And then, of course, beating the whole uh, classic mode will get it, get you some tickets. And you can cash them in for different types of eggs. Different rarities obviously come out randomly. It's super cool. It's, and again, it's being, it's being fan made and fan run. And we always talk about these. We're going to talk a lot. We're going to talk a lot about DMCAs in a second here, especially with Nintendo and Pokemon. We know they're very aggressive legally. Um, so it's fan made. They're not allowed to make money. And I know the servers went down uh, a couple nights ago. So this is a, this is Wednesday. I said it's the 15th, right? So I think on the Monday, the servers went down and I saw people messaging online. Oh, I'd love to be able to sort support these people. Like, you know, it's just fan made. It's getting so popular. The, the servers they've, that they put up are struggling. How do we support them? And other people are like, no, 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 they can't make money off of a fan made thing. Otherwise that's how you get sued and get shut down. So it's this really weird thing that happens we, we talk about it all the time right with these fan made anything and it just it this is so cool right now there's also ways to get this offline like i said it's online and they update their servers so you have to you create a very quickly create an account um and you can just go in and play and it's it, it's a ton a ton of fun 
it's I've been having a blast. I'm hoping by the next time we chat, I'll say I've beat the the classic mode. It opens up an endless mode where instead of going to 200, you go like a, like a you know self-explanatory endlessly forever. Uh, um, it just it's really really cool. It's a really well done thing. Um, not all the moves are implemented. They have little like markers for P. Like if there's a, a, a an attack that's only partially implemented. It'll just have a big capital P beside it just to warn you like, hey, we're, it's a work in progress. Super cool. Super well done. Uh, I'm super into it. You just kind of grind out, you know, let me, and then there's different ways to like, as you're going, last thing I'll mention about it is super cool. Um, you know, like in Pokemon, you go, you walk through and you're in the, in the, in a forest and you're going to uh, run into lots of like grass and bug type Pokemon. And then you go into the mountains and they have, so then you catch lots of like ground and rock types and you go to a volcano, there are lots of fire types. Right, you go to the you go to the beat, you go to you go surf uh, on some water in the ocean. You're gonna catch lots of water types. Same thing happens here, where there's ways to go to different biomes effectively, how it's referred to. And you know, if you if you go to again, same thing. If you go to like I'm in an ice cave right now. There's lots of ice type Pokemon. Which, guess what? Spoilers for that uh, round 145. Uh, there's a dragon type there. I'm not gonna say which one. Uh, but I'll say dragon type, and I gotta load. Up, I gotta get some really strong ice types to take out those dragons. Uh, so that's at least that's at least the game plan right now. So we're gonna we're gonna try and go for that again. I don't know where I'm at. Level I'm at round fifty or sixty or something right now. In my next run, the, and the, and it was great. I went in blind. Like the way I love going to most games. We talk about this all the time. I love going in. No, no, I don't like I don't like trailers for movies. I don't like spoilers for any of the shows I'm watching. I'm not gonna read guides the first time I play play a game. That's why I'm still I'm I'm ready to face the final boss in Tears of the Kingdom. I've done a lot a, a lot of stuff. Not everything. Let's be honest. It's a gigantic game. It would take a lot of a lot more hours than I have for the rest of the year to finish it like a hundred close to a hundred percent but I, I don't i don't want to have spoilers about that stuff that sort of stuff so i went into this blind and the first few rounds were super super rough i was i was getting knocked out right away didn't know what i was doing i'm not i'm also not super familiar with some of the later uh generations of pokemon so i was kind of confused uh about what to expect and all that sort of thing but i, I love it poke rogue cannot recommend it enough if you like pokemon if you like roguelites if you like cool fan projects it's got it all. Let's go. Next topic. We're sticking on the Nintendo theme. We mentioned this a few episodes ago. Nintendo had a lawsuit against Switch Emulator Company. Uh, Switch Emulator uh, Group, uh, not a company, uh, Yuzu. Um, and they settled. And they wiped wiped out 8,535 Yuzu uh, repos on GitHub, which is a lot of data that's publicly available. Um, so Nintendo, obviously the deal is Nintendo has this console. The Nintendo Switch, you may have, you may have heard of it, um, and this emulator program Yuzu allows you to play the games. Um, Nintendo again can't do anything because legally you're allowed to have a way to back up your games. This has been defended in court. We've talked about the ROMs and and and, and ROM hacks and all this sort of thing. That's allowed. And again, same thing with the uh, Poke Rogue didn't do anything wrong here because this is all they created all of the asset those assets them so they're those assets themselves so they had to re pix redraw the pixels for squirtle for charmander for pikachu for every single pokemon that's in their game they had to create even though they exist they can't just copy paste they had to do them themselves so there's a couple of rules that you can do to get around some of these things but what happened is um basically yuzu made some mistake and did some illegal stuff and then that gave nintendo the opportunity to sue and then there's a DMCA on all of these Yuzu forks. So big, big two issues. What's a fork? What's the Ill illegal stuff? So a fork is basically, it's a, it's a re repository Ooh. Uh, that, the, that on uh, GitHub, you kind of share code uh, visibly uh, on upstream. Uh, I don't want to use the word repository again. Uh, re upstream work. So basically you can, uh, you can build on you can work through, you can iterate, oh my goodness, on ideas or change. I'm impressed with my vocabulary today already. Or don't worry, it's, it's going to be downhill from now, uh, from here on out. Um, but basically, you can kind of iterate on ideas and kind of, uh, especially for open source projects. Let's say if I say, hey, this is my work, but I'm not going to give everyone right access to edit it. Someone can then create a fork of that and say, hey, what about changing these lines to improve this or add this functionality or whatever? So... All of these were wiped out because everything associated with this Yuzu project were wiped out. Um, so then, well, let's get to the illegal stuff. What happened? Um, Yuzu was then able to play and load Switch. So the Switch, uh, every game has like its own unique encryption uh, key. 
and Yuzu was allowing you to use keys that may not... Hey, no, they, they, no not, we don't have to use this funny language like we usually do. Uh, you were allowed to use encryption keys that didn't belong to you. Because, again, backing up is legal, right? Um, so that's, you know, you stepped outside of that boundary. Nintendo has their in. Boom, their lawyers are already there. Uh, the next target looks like something called the Meg Switch, which is a way to massive quotation marks back up your Switch games. Um, sometimes you can back up quote unquote back up multiple on a single SD card, uh, which sure sounds like they're coming after them next. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's funny. And again, these, these lawsuits are partially built. Um, we always talk about these things to kind of make sure no one else begins actively developing on these, right? You shut them down and make sure no one else is going to go to continue this because there's been this legal action against it. Um, this is one of those things, unfortunately, fully expected, fully expected, un unfortunate, be unfortunate because I love these fan projects. Like I, I love the idea of, of, of these ROMs and all that stuff. It's how you can get access to these cool old NES and Super Nintendo games that, but again, there's the legality of you need to have a copy. Like I got my Final Fantasy three poster up aside. I always, I always look over and point to it. No one can see me. There's no camera right now, but I got all this stuff here. I got my NES Final Fantasy 1 stuff up in front of me. Like, it's it's great to make sure that that's backed up because I have legal copies in the room next to me. But it's it's unfortunate. That the, and it's expected. You don't even need to say unfortunate. It's 100% expected. But let's move on to some excellent Nintendo news. The Nintendo 2 Switch is confirmed. At least, kind of. Uh, and we were right. So, on May 7th, Nintendo president tweeted... I'm going to read, I'm going to read the whole thing. This is Furukawa, president of Nintendo. We will make an announcement about the successor of Nintendo Switch within this fiscal year. This is like financial talk stuff related back into the quotations. It will have been over nine years since we announced the existence of Nintendo Switch back in March, 2015. We will be holding a Nintendo Direct this June regarding the Nintendo Switch software lineup for the latter half of 2014, 2024, 2014. Oh my goodness. We're time traveling. Back to the quotations. But please be aware that there will be no mention of the Nintendo Switch successor during that presentation. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's going to be a huge Nintendo Switch because there will obviously be a mention at that point. Oh, end quotation. Uh, there will obviously be a mention <laughs> during that Nintendo Switch. Um, so there was a results call from one of the recorders that just happened as well. And about this next-gen console. And so is this brand new or what's happening? And Furukawa answered saying, the Switch Next model is the appropriate way to describe it. So at first, that's very cryptic, executive type talk filtered through their legal team, the executive team. However, let's dig deeper. Nintendo has really strange naming convention and calling it the Switch Next is actually the most Nintendo thing ever. We had Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, Nintendo DS, the DSi, the 3DS, the new 3DS, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Wii, to Wii U. They don't do PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into infinity. Why not call it the Super Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Super Switch? No, no, no. I, I think the, the most Nintendo thing here would be to actually call it the Switch Next. As, as was quoted here. I think that's that that's the... Wait, here's the thing. We were right about the prediction that the Switch 2 will be announced sh sometime soon. It was it was a week or two after I recorded that last episode. This came out. So check mark on us, right? But it's just... It's the most Nintendo thing for them to name it some weird, funny convention. And also, speaking of... I already mentioned Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not fight, quite finished it. Um, I'm going to have a spoiler for a game that just actually turned a year old, so I don't feel that bad talking about spoilers. Um, at the very beginning of Tears of the Kingdom, spoilers if you haven't played it, um, at the very beginning you have this prologue whole zone, and you finally finish it, and you finally get the quest, find Princess Zelda. And you're on this uh, floating continent in Tears of the Kingdom. We talked about it. There's a floating, there's continents in the air, there's the ground, and there's the underworld, right? You're on one of the continents above, and you finally get the ability to go down to the ground, and you explore the whole massive open world. Great. When this for, you finally finish your prologue, you get a quest that just says, find Princess Zelda. And on the horizon is a golden dragon flying because you know in Breath of the Wild, there's a bunch of dragons. You can get scales, blah, blah, blah for items and whatever you do with them. But 
the thing is, that dragon is actually Princess Zelda. So the qu the game starts, find Princess Zelda, and you're like, yeah, right, you know, you can use the Leo meme. Right there. She's right, right there. But of course, at the time, you don't know it. But later on, you look back, and you're like, oh my goodness, incredible work, Nintendo. Um, let's talk predictions further. Uh, there's no need to invent reinvent the wheel. Nintendo, I think, has nailed it. They, they've been tweaking and all this. Perfect formula. Let the games do the gimmicks. I want the Nintendo Switch next to be super powerful. Uh, continue this mobile hybrid tech. Um, better Joy-Cons. We don't want that drift. There's a lot of Joy-Con drift issue. Uh, hashtag fix my Switch. Um, uh, backwards compatibility. We need that. 100% we need backwards compatibility. Uh, we want people to be able to transfer over their purchased digital games. A lot of people have done a lot of pr digital purchasing on the Nintendo Switch. The Switch Next, I better be able to bring my games to the next Switch is what I'm hoping is going to be happening. Um, uh, what are we expecting? I I'm expecting, unfortunately, at this point, probably Q1 2025, January, February, March of 2025. I was really hoping for Q4 of Christmas this year. That's what I wanted of 2024, but that's okay. Cheers to Nintendo. All the best. I hope the system is absolutely incredible. Okay, we are going to get into one of the greatest topics. I forgot to bring this up. I forgot to bring this up in the opening. This is absolutely incredible topic. Now, I want you to picture this. Take a second. Breathe in and relax. Okay, exhale slowly through the mouth. I'm not going to do it. Even though I have a pop filter, you wouldn't hear it that badly. You get out of a war. At the end of the day, you've worked hard. You get out of a warm shower, you're feeling nice, you settle into bed, you're relaxing, you're at peace with the day, the work that you've done, the, every, the, the, the energy you put into the world, right? You start drifting off to sleep, you're lying perfectly still, and then all of a sudden, BAM! You feel like this sudden sensation of falling for a split second, and then boom, you're back awake. Um, we all know what, what I'm talking about, right? It, it happens to basically everyone. Um, it's a really weird thing, it sometimes jolts you awake. But then sometimes you can kind of like get yourself back to sleep within a minute or two. It doesn't necessarily wake you all the way up. So this falling sensation is called a hypnic jerk. Okay. It's called what's happening is there's just a sudden muscle reflex over most of your body. That's why because everything tenses at the same time. I know you can't see me. I'm doing it though. I'm doing it right now in my chair. So we've all felt this, right? But what's going on there? Well, I remember a, a former coworker, now former coworker at the time he was a coworker. Talk to me about this. And um, it actually has to do with uh, how, how babies learn to not fall out of their bed eventually. Sometimes, some, usually very quickly. It'll, it, it still happens though, but it's usually a pretty quick learning process for it to not happen regularly anymore. So, published research, uh, most notably uh, Coolidge 2006 et al. Um, the major hypothesis is the brain is misinterpreting uh, muscle relaxation with the onset of sleep. And... The idea is that the signals um, from our ancestors is that when primates used to sleep in trees in order our and uh, primate ancestors would sleep in trees as to keep, keep themselves safe, this sudden uh, movement wakes us up, right? So you're starting to fall asleep. Uh, the body feels like it's, it's going to go there. Um, but because if you fall asleep when you're in a tree, there's a high likelihood you might just fall out of the tree. But because we have this sudden onset of sleep, we hit this muscle, uh, inter this muscle flex, which then wakes us up so that we can then wake up and grab ourselves and not fall out of the tree. So there's this evolutionary echo of things that used to keep our ancestors safe. Um, and the ones who had this mechanism were more likely to not fall out of a tree in their sleep, increasing, increasing their odds of survival. They're not going to fall out, break a leg, fall into a predator. And they had a higher likelihood of passing on the street. That's how these things work, right? Science, boom. But then that's exactly the same mechanism. This is the same brain mechanism between interpreting muscle relaxation and the onset of sleep that teaches little babies when they first get out of a crib and into a, a big kid bed. It's that same falling sensation we have now in our beds as they're about to go out, as a kid is able to, is about to fall out of their bed, which is why it only takes a time or two for them to learn that feeling and then say, okay, the second the, the falling starts, they, they're supposed to be able to jolt themselves awake, catch themselves on the ed edge of their bed, and hopefully, you know, roll back over into the middle of their bed and uh, go back to sleeping peacefully. Because that's what little kids are known for. Am I right, everyone? Or am I right? Okay, a huge, huge gaming story. 
almost the second I hit post uh, last uh, two weeks ago now, Hell Divers 2, uh, massively, incredibly review, positively reviewed game on Steam. Um, one of the highest reviewed, definitely of 2024. Uh, it's a super cool third-person sci-fi shooter game, four-player online co-op. There's missions. You're you're going around. You're a little space marine type of taking out aliens on different planets. There's there's a firestorm planet. There's an ice world. All this stuff, really cool, right? So the beginning of May, just a just a couple weeks ago, it was announced that all players were going to have a a f- enforced PSN. That's a PlayStation Network account uh, associated with their uh, accounts. Even if you're on the PC, if you're playing on Steam, like I said, um, people got really mad about this. Um, so the the problem is there's also going to be some of their own anti-cheat uh, uh, software loaded with this. It becomes bloatware. It's kernel level anti-cheat. So it takes up a lot of resources on your computer. Um, and also the PlayStation Network is only available in 69 countries, nice, around the world, which is basically barring the majority of people in the world from playing this game. So people were upset. Um, so, and then also lying about your, and using a VPN to get out of those countries is against Sony's terms of service, their TOS, and can get you banned from the PlayStation Network. Um, <laughs> so, um, People are also kind of worried. There's this huge list of like, you know, Sony's not exactly. And again, this is it, every company. It's all about data. And we know that because they're going to sell data as much as they're going to sell anything. Uh, Sony has a horrible history of 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 their of their user data. April 2011 hackers, uh, they, they got 77 million PlayStation user data. May of the same year, 25 million of their online customers. Uh, June of that month, oh my goodness, we had November 2014, 100 terabytes of data from Sony Pictures. That was a big one. That was more than just, uh, but that was Sony Pictures, but it's still associated with Sony, obviously. Um, social media access, got, got, they got their, ha- got their account, their Sony ac- social media account hacked. That was hard to say, 2017. Um, so this is pretty bad. So basically, it took f- the first, within the first 48 hours of this announcement, Three months of nearly all positive reviews got completely wiped out and got moved to mixed. And within another couple hours, it got moved to negative. Um, 60 hours after this post, uh, the Helldivers 2 official Discord said they're in discussions with Sony to try and figure this out. Um, They claimed they weren't aware about the PlayStation Network uh, country limitations. They said they appreciate the feedback. Um, on May 4th, Sony then delisted Helldivers 2 in over 177 countries, officially, just to say, well, you're not going to be able to play the game, so get the out of here. Um, this is not, not good. Um, someone made a point, uh, yeah, it's this again, this is just, this was a very big point. What was this? Yeah, it's, it's a big point of like people just, they wanted to get people of PSN accounts. So that's some exec can then say like, look, this great game was really successful and we leveraged it to get 3% increase in our PlayStation Network account creations and all this extra daily activity. And that will result in some big, big executive type bonuses. Congratulations, rich people. Um, There was this really easy, simple solution of saying, hey, we're really sorry. We're going to ask you to sign up. When you sign up, here's this really cool plus 100 fire armor. For the next fire world you have to go fight on. That would have been pretty easy. Um, on May 5th. So like a day or two after this came out. Uh, the Helldivers devs came out. And admittedly admitted they weren't blameless in this. And they said they knew this requirement was coming. Um, and. Uh, the next day. Uh, so that's then May 6th. PlayStation tweeted out saying they're updating the system requirements and people on Steam won't require a PSN network. We're going to be looking, you know, thank the community for the feedback. We're going to be looking how to work with you moving forward, blah, 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 blah. That's five days to crash the positive 
uh, reception of a really, really, you know, people are talking like potentially like game of the year candidate. If not, if it's not going to win, it's game of the year candidate. It's game of the year material, and you completely ruin it, its public perception within, you know, with, with the snap of a finger of this like, excellent idea. Um, so that just it was a massive, massive story. And at least you know, here's the thing, you know, kudos to the to the people, the community for stepping up and having their voices heard. And then it's good that PlayStation backed off. It's one of the largest games of 2024, um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's really good that Sony actually did back off, because I didn't think they were going to. I really thought this was going to get messy, uh, but I'm really glad that it didn't. I'm really glad people are able to play a really uh, good, fun, engaging game that it seems to be widely really, really uh, beloved all over, so uh, cheers to power to the players, am I right? Uh, another silly gaming corporate uh <laughs> talk uh square enix they've officially announced they're going to pursue a multi-platform strategy because they've had a lot of playstation exclusives and playstation is definitely paying for that exclusivity but it's clearly not making up the potential lost revenue from being on xbox and nintendo and steam and all these things and especially on the switch next coming out in 2025 um that's a callback to like 10 minutes ago listen to it i, I was brilliant back then uh what else happened this is it is weird that it's you know taking so long for this to 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 be realized like i i don't know why square enix has always loved these exclusive i know we know why because they get immediate short-term cash that's why but it's also unfortunate because they also announced that they're going to be focusing on the larger franchised uh games which is really bad for people who like star ocean octopath traveler bravely default the world ends with you triangle strategy those are probably not happening anymore um now uh the one caveat octopath traveler 3 maybe still has an opportunity it was a small budget team and it did well in north america so maybe it makes the cut uh then two days after this announcement i didn't give the date but it was just a few days ago from now um it was like on the the 13th or something uh they as square enix has announced large layoffs in the u.s and eu branches as part of this massive restructuring blah 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 the AAA gaming market is really bad it's really rough now um yeah i mean square enix has been struggling there was some well it's been a, it's been a pretty tough the tough little while for them uh, they've released these smaller games like i said the not triple a the double a games but they haven't been marketing them some of these are cool. The games I just rattled off, those are cool RPGs. People probably would have liked them if they knew more about them. Probably have a little bit more sales if people know about your stuff. They they had a poor Forspoken issue. That game didn't go great. The Avengers game didn't go great. Um, Final Fantasy 16 um, was, was good, but it wasn't this massive hit that everyone was expecting. Final Fantasy doesn't need to be uh, Dark Souls. It doesn't need to be. Like, let it be a cool RPG. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV is kind of hitting a... There, not much content's coming out, so there's not a, lot of, not a lot of activity there. There's another expansion coming, but that's two months from now, so there's not going to be a lot. It's just... It's unfortunate that this is happening, and I think it's really bad. Obviously, you know, shutting down, people losing jobs. Obviously, this we always, we always come back to this. It's a bad thing. Ob you know, <laughs> it was bad. People lose their jobs. Um, the thing is, it's bad for the industry as well because if people are just going to focus if developers are only going to focus on these big massive games it's kind of like going the way of a lot of like movie studios right like movies i feel like there's you know see movie studios now struggling that for you know historically 5 10 15 20 years ago were doing great but then it just got to the point where the development cost cost so much to make a video game so much money to make a great new movie and sure you need high quality stuff but there needs to be this this balance, right? I mean, like, let's look at 2024. We've had some fantastic Dragon's Dogma 2. We've had the Helldivers 2, Rise of Ronin. We have all these the Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on that people don't have the money and or the time to consume it all. So you, these developers have to get creative. They've got to bring their costs down, not just by firing people. It's got to, you got to get more creative than that in order to bring your costs down. Um, what else are we getting into? Oh, you want to talk about him? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about it. This is definitely directly related, right? EA, <clears throat> EA is looking to put ads in their AAA games. Isn't that fantastic? You're going to be riding your horse along in Red Dead Redemption 3. And then all of a sudden you're going to see some billboards 
Gatorade. Get your electrolytes. It's it's just it's silly. In AAA games, you're already paying what seventy, eighty dollars for the game, and then you're getting more ads. And what was the what was the quote? I, I wrote this one down. Um, that EA said, uh, "We'll be very thoughtful as we move into into that that being adding putting ads into AAA games. Advertising, another start quote. Advertising has an opportunity to, to be a meaningful driver of growth for us." End quote. And executive bonuses. Um, this is just I. Uh, it's just it's so disappointing. It's times like these that I'm always reminded of this incredible quote from Confucius, who said, "After initial success." Sales and marketing people take over, and the product people eventually make their way out. Uh, that was actually uh, Steve Jobs. That's my mistake. I misquoted there. Um, but it just, it's really true, right? Like you have these, again, GTA, great game. Red Dead Redemption, great game. You start seeing ads, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dilute. It's going to... It's going to take away from the actual product. Like, again, okay, fine. If you're in playing Grand Theft Auto and you see a billboard and you're driving, your your little character's driving on some highway and you see a billboard for actual Coca-Cola, I, I, I guess, but it's still going to dilute. It's going to... I, I, I don't like it regardless. I mean, look, it's... I mean, Confucius Confucius is right. Like, look, look at what's happening with Boeing. Do we talk about Boeing? I mean, like, it's the sales and the marketers have taken over to maximize profits instead of, you know, Boeing used to be an engineering company. We know what awful, awful stuff there. Obviously, the, you know, the success of a video game is not quite as the, the world impact of the success of an airplane. But you see the parallel of what Steve Jobs said there. Um, what are we going to be talking about? Oh, we have to talk about the Bad Batch. We are running long here. Let's talk about Bad Batch season finale. We will, uh, we'll get to a couple other things uh, next time. We have to talk about Bad Batch because I love my Star Wars. Okay, we finally finished Bad Batch. We're going to start Tales of the Empire. Bad Batch had me feeling, had me feeling, it had me feel. We're going we're gonna to come back to it a few times because we've talked about the Clone Wars so many times. We've talked about Rebels a bunch. It's, it, it was so well done. It's, I feel like it definitely was a final season in that everything was, everything stemmed from the end of season two with, spoiler we're going to talk spoilers about this we have to now full full on you know warning is everything stemming from tech it, it, and season three stems from that up until you know it's addressed by crosshair in the final episode of the bad batch ended when tech died right like it's it's no longer that that clone force right like it's it's and, and it was and it was kind of this like culmination they they rescued their they're you know, if they, Omega's their sister. We know Omega's actually their sister, but they look at her in the the parent parental daughter uh, dynamic, looking after her, helping her, raising her. And it's I, I was kind of left conflicted because now let me perfect full caveat. Star Wars is built on planting seeds and coming back to them at much later dates and times. We know that in I believe it was the seventies, late seventies for the first Star Wars. But they referenced the Clone Wars. And admittedly, at the time, it was a throwaway line. You fought in the Clone Wars, and Obi-Wan's looking at Luke. I ended the Clone Wars. Also, to be fair, Obi-Wan kind of started them. In, 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 a, in a sense, he was, you know, he talked to the you know, Camino, but whatever. No, we're not getting into it. We're not getting into it. But you know what I mean. So, like, that, that seed was planted, which now you look at what Star Wars is. It is so much. Current Star Wars is so much the story of Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker, which is the Clone Wars, right? How did he become this warrior and all this, all, all everything that happens with that, right? And and so the fact that Bad Batch ends almost on a happy note in that, you know, the three of the <laughs> three of them survived. Uh, we know Rex obviously out there. We know Echo obviously out there. Um, and it's just, it's, it, at first it left me, I'm not sure, but then I like the fact that and then I, I, I took a, I took a night. I slept on it. I thought about it the next day. I was driving to work. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I don't know, Omega. And it's like, it is good. You know, the whole show was about what are these soldiers going to do when they don't need to be soldiers. That was a lot of what season one was about. What are they going to do? And they actually, they still had to be mercenaries. They had to find their freedom. They have to find their peace, all this, all this stuff. And then they, they found it. Now, they found it on a planet that the Empire knew about, so why wouldn't the Empire come back? But maybe there were no resources. We're not going to argue that. That's fine. There's no resources on Pabu. The Empire doesn't care. They need resources. They're, they're trying to take over an entire galaxy, right? That's fine. We can live with that. Um, and then Omega, yeah, Omega grows up, and the clones are going to age out. You can see, you see Hunter at the end. He's, he's old, right? Still, still, still tough looking, right? But, but old. 
and then Omega is going to go off on her own adventures. And it makes sense because we know Omega already knows Hera. And so we expect to, we will see a, a live action Omega or the next animated thing in a couple years or however it's going to work. And, and, and obviously I'm, ex I'm excited for that. And it's, it's good that then, you know, the remaining members of the Bad Batch get their piece, right? Like, what were they trying to do? They, they didn't want to be fighting all the time. So I'm like, I'm, that's good. And obviously the, the only thing, the only thing that I'm still holding on to my apprehension is we've kind of pushed back the sadness if Omega's innocent, you know, because Hunter tells Omega, oh, if you ever need us, we will be there. And it's, yeah, sure, Omega's not going to want to call them unless she really needs them. But if she really needs them and then one or all of them do get killed, like, I, 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 was, I was preparing myself going into the final episodes being like, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this loss, which I understand then because I feel like everyone was expecting it, they decided not to. Or, you know, just it made sense for the story and I get it because it's Hunter and Crosshair coming together and all this stuff. It was, it was very nicely done. But it's just, I was, ex I, was, I, was pre I was preparing myself emotionally for the loss because I was not prepared for tech. Right, like after they hit us with the tech uh, <laughs> death, I was like, okay, now now we're getting real here. Um, and and again, they they leave it much like they've left. We know Rex fought with the rebels, but again, we don't really know what happened with Rex. Like during during the the season of Rebels, uh, series of Rebels, I was predicting that Vader was gonna kill him because of how close Anakin and Rex were. Like I was I was expecting like this this could get really dark, and it still might to be honest because we've seen where Rex ends up and all that stuff. And again, we saw these cool tie-ins with, with Wolf and Rex. And again, I love the fact that we don't need resolution on that because it's, we know where they end up. We see how the seed is planted. The, maybe, maybe the middle never gets filled in on screen. Maybe, maybe it does one day. They have, if it's going to stay animated, they can do it whenever. But maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be because we know where they, exactly, we know where they got to. We know where they end up in getting involved again, even though, again, they were trying to find their peace and stay out of the war. So it's this kind of big theme with the clones, right? So I'm, I'm happy with how the Bad Batch ended. It's, well, we will see Omega for sure that on that prediction. We'll probably see Hunter and Wrecker and Crosshair again and Echo and Rex and all of that whole squad. Um, Super excited to watch Tales of the Empire and see what that's all about. I know there's already a couple episodes out by the time this is being recorded and posted, but that's also okay. And that is going to be the last topic. I had to cut a bunch of stuff out. We are definitely going to get into it uh, in the next couple episodes. This has been a great couple weeks for gaming, a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, continue to send those messages in the comments uh, below on the online social medias, on the podcast universe uh it's been fantastic chatting i hope you're all doing well wherever and whenever you are be safe out there be good to each other and we will see you sometime again very very soon bye bye <music>